I know I'm from the hood, whatever. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's go to Hollywood. And so uh, we're at the, the art thing that my ex invited us to. It's happening over at this gallery, Lace, up on Hollywood Boulevard. We're there. It's going pretty well, you know what I mean? And it's um, put on by the SoCast organization. It's a bunch of uh, artists, of course, talking about art and the community of art and the art community and the art-based magazine built on the art community. It's not the art that I think about when I think about art. I want to say something about it, right? But we're the only blacks in about four or five of us, and it's all a bunch of white people. So like a older Caucasian dude seems sort of drunk and shit. He says some shit about, you know, what about the blacks and the Mexicans and the gangsters and all this shit? And what about their art? And, and I totally fucking feel them. People from the Journal of Aesthetics and Protests are on the panel, start staying up on the panel and like, they're putting their fists in the air and they're like, yeah, revolution. And they're like, yeah, motherfucker, I feel you, right? I didn't want to set it off because it was cliche for me to set it off. But since the white guy set it off, I'm like, ha, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling this shit all, you know what I mean? So I say my piece or whatever, I speak my piece. He's making a critique about who's included in community, which was the right critique in the moment and a fine critique, and it was um, also kind of what you figure is going to get said. And what was really brilliant about what he did all of a sudden that made me really interested in wanting to get to know him was that he stopped himself in the middle of it and went, wait a minute. Then it clicked to me and I realized this whole panel, this whole art discussion about community and art didn't... I wasn't included in the community, or the artist in the hood, or the artist without college education, those type of artists weren't included in this community, and it clicked to me like, uh. So I said, oh, I caught myself and I sat down. And my friend Amy asked me to help have the after party over at my house from the event. And I wanted to invite him, but we were kind of rushing. I couldn't get there, so I asked my friend Sarah to say, hey, you know, let these guys know they're welcome to come to the party if they want to continue to have that conversation. A shirt girl comes up to us like, hey, excuse me, someone would like for you to come to the party. Give us the address and all this. We get to the house, um, and they show up. It was cool. We smoked weed, laughs and shit. You know what I mean? I hit on a couple of lesbians and shit. It was like a really kind of fun interaction amongst everybody. You know, and everybody was sort of like, whatever, just drinking and getting high and having fun and sort of just partying together and getting to know each other. I met one guy, white guy on a panel, cool little motherfucker. He's like, yeah, bro, I don't give a fuck about that panel. You know, I just got published. I'm so happy I'm published. Fuck it, yeah. So we toasted bottom to the top. You know what I mean? You know, there was this sense of like, wow, this is really cool, this is working, like, how easy is it? You know, we all just fucking hang out and get together and we can just talk and there are ways for it to happen where we can get on, you know. And <clears throat> at the same time, still somewhere in the back of my head or in the back of whatever, you're sort of like, can it really be that easy? Is it really happening this easy? So we leave and drunk, everything is over, right? We're walking out the house. So those of us kind of hosted the thing, we're sitting around, we're cleaning up, we're finishing up, we're chatting, we're hanging out. My roommates come home. I noticed Hakeem. Hakeem had a motherfucking, like, a, a grocery bag full of shit. And I know he didn't come, but I'm like, damn, nigga, where you get all this shit from? I said, hey, guess what happened? It was really cool. This thing went down. It was all great. And then um, we're just chatting. And then one of them gets up from the couch, kind of goes back into the office. He's like, oh, the white dude gave me some, he said, just take it, whoopty wop. I'm like, nigga, you telling me? So the white boy just said, oh, take all my DVDs. You can have them. He was like, yeah, nigga. Maybe he thought I was some underprivileged nigga or some shit. Whoop the wop. I'm like, nigga. You think I'm going to fall for that shit? You know what I mean? I'm like, nigga, you stole some shit, right? He admits it. You know what I mean? So I'm like, nigga, take that shit back. Other niggas admit they stole some shit, too. A look of panic on her face and says, Jessica, can you please tell me that you have my computer? This nigga pull a motherfucking computer up out his drawers. God. Damn, right? And at that moment, it just all just went, fuck. The phone rings. I pick up the fucking phone. She's like, look, I got your information, all this shit. I'm like, damn, thinking to myself, look at this shit. I ain't stole shit. They got my information. So I'm like, fuck this. Yeah, I know the niggas who got your shit. Hold up right here. Whoopty wop wop wop. We call this nigga right now. Call me back. I have like five people on my back wanting to know what's going on, wanting to know what decisions I'm going to make, having input about what they want, wanting to involve the police, wanting this and that to happen. And I'm like, 
okay, I'm going to call you back because I got to talk to these people and see what's going on. I'm like, look, nigga, they come into your house. I'm going to give them your address, all this. Nigga's like, oh, no, nigga, no, 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 no. Fuck that, man. Let me just drop it off at you. I don't want them coming to my house. I'm like, whatever, nigga. Bring that shit, right? Nigga's at my door. Got the shit. Plastic bag sits on my couch, right? I'm sitting there. He's sitting there, too, right? I'm thinking, oh, we're going to be here waiting for these motherfuckers to come back. You giving them shit. They can see your ass. No way to me, right? It don't go down like that. People were like, we're not going in there. Fuck that. They took the shit. They need to come to our house. Perfectly reasonable. Everybody's pissed off. They took shit from us. None of those guys have cars. They're going by bus. It's now at like 12, 31 in the morning at night. There's not, they're not, I'm sure there's buses there, but they're not going to fucking jump on a bus to bring the shit back to our house. Then there was a suggestion about bringing a cat, or telling them to get in a cab. We'd pay for the cab. You know, um, <clears throat> I called back, Will's like, Jessica, <laughs> you can't get a cab in the middle of the hood. You can't be a black man and call for a cab in the middle of the hood in the middle of the night. And so we made a decision that we'd go down to his house, but um, so, uh, certainly I wasn't going to drive alone. But also, there's a lot of people who were really uncomfortable with going into this neighborhood who hadn't been there a lot. Me and my other roommate, Kat, had no problems with it or were familiar with it, no people in it. Spend time there. We were comfortable going there, but we thought maybe we needed one more kind of set of backup. And the person who came up, ended up being the best was indeed one of our friends who is a, whatever, a male female, you know, who just could handle it. We got a hold of her. She got in the, um, we went, we got her. Um, another friend just called her ex-boyfriend just because whatever, so there was some other person there. And so we take our little caravan off into the hood. At this point, it's so fucking late. Will has fallen asleep, and so when I call him, he's not answering the phone. And so we end up hanging out at this gas station, trying to figure out how to get a hold of him, trying to get a hold of this other person whose number he's giving me at this point. We're waking people's parents up. They're hanging up on us. They're like, it's late. Stop calling. We're like... Fuck this. At that point, we just like went over there and banged down the door. We banged down the wrong door. It was his landlord's door. We didn't know. His landlord comes to the door with a gun. My landlord is looking up at these motherfuckers and shit. It's all types of late at night. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers coming at me like I stole some shit. Where's the rest of our shit? All I can really say is, nigga brought this shit right here. This nigga's phone number calling him. I get a phone call like the next day. Oh, nigga, why you snitch? Whoop de wop up. Like, nigga, snitch? Y'all motherfuckers got me implicated in a motherfucking crime. You know what I mean? I ain't going to jail for none of y'all. I don't steal. I asked y'all not to steal. Y'all done did it. Pretty much y'all like, fuck me. Fuck what I'm going through. You know what I mean? Over the next few days, Will and I spent time on the phone talking to each other, trying to figure this shit out, negotiating what's going on. At the same time, through him, I've gotten a hold of the person's father who had stolen the stuff and his dad was wonderful and said, I'm going to do whatever I can to get this back. Thank you so much for not involving the police. Thank you for calling me and doing it this way. Uh, you know, just call me back at this time. It took about three days at that point to actually get everything else back, but we did it. You know, he had talked to somebody else's parent. They had been gathering stuff up. I'm sure at this point all these you guys are completely, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. He's like, oh, that motherfucker's talking about shooting you. I'm like, he's talking about shooting me. He's like, yeah, he showed me the pistol. He's like, I should just run down to that nigga Bush house and smoke him right now. Like, nigga, you telling niggas you about to shoot me? You know what I mean? I, I'm not raised like that to where uh, people should, uh, it's a threat. It's, it's, it's a fucking major threat on your life. You know what I mean? So, but uh, I took the advice from my buddy to uh, let the situation calm down, let it cool out. And uh, I really don't know where it stands right now. I haven't ran into the cat yet.